Hello, uh, my name is Demis Jivuka, and thank you to this uh, class of uh, beginners class, actually, for the modern batik technique. Um, what we're going to be focusing on today uh, is the toning component. Very, very crucial in the modern batik technique. Um, I'm going to be introducing just a few uh, products that we use in this technique. Um, just think of, of, let's say, the Asian uh, uh, what equipment they have. They have the janting tool. Here we don't have the janting tool. Uh, but we have very similar uh, equipment. For example, we have um, dylons. Everybody knows the dylon dies. Uh, today they switched from the tins. This used to be the old uh, tin dylon, and we switched now to the packets. All these materials, you can get them from Amazon.com come if you want to order them from there but i'll be giving you a lot of listing towards the end of the video where you can get in touch where you can get materials now of course we are familiar with all the dyes uh different colors these are the kind color these are the kind of colors actually i use um i use 33 this is a kingfisher i use uh havana brown i use uh yellow and i use uh purple but at the same time, when I have dylon dyes, I can also mix in Prussians. These are MX Prussian dyes. Very, very uh, brilliant colors, the blue and the yellow and the Mexican red. So basically, these are the colors that I use in the, for dyeing in the modern batik technique. And we have uh, things like um, brushes. Um, I think most of you could be familiar with these brushes. These are Bristol brushes, brushes, or we could say straw brushes. This is a flat, light brush, which you must have. Then we have a medium brush, and we have another size, which is size three. Uh, the small one is size two. The large one is size 12. Um, I mean, these, I've only got four of these, so this is good enough for me. Um, but remember, they have to be flat. There's a reason why they're flat. We don't use round brushes, and you, I will demonstrate when we start the process. And we have um, calligraphy paints. Uh, these nibs come off, as you can see, and you can put them off. Now, they come from different sizes. This is 5.5B. 5.5B is the one which I use mostly in all my workshop and what I use for myself. It's a very a mallet purpose, a nib. And these are just nib holders. They, sometimes they sell them separate. You could buy a nib, or the holder, and then the nib. Um, so that should be, this we use it for inking. So this will come in the end when I demonstrate what it does. Uh, we have Indian ink. Uh, this is called Speedball. Um, I'll be listing all these things in detail as we move into the program. So speedball is Indian ink and it's permanent. It must be permanent black ink, black Indian ink speedball. Um, we have uh, blow dryer, um, blow dryer. I mean, I just have to plug it in, but a blow dryer is a blow dryer. This one is pretty flexible, so you can, uh, but any blow dryer can work. Uh, it's, case, it's case if it rains and you wanna dry your work, the blow dryer comes in handy. If the sun is out outside, you can dry it outside. Um, especially in North America where you have winter periods to so six months, you don't wanna go outside there. So the blow dryer comes in very handy. So you have a blow dryer. Uh, then you have a flat iron, uh, blow dryer, blow dryer, and you have uh, the flat iron. You need this, we use this to remove the wax out because we iron it between newsprint and I'll show you how that works. And we have a masking tape. You need tape to pin your work on a, a newsprint or whatever. So you need a masking tape. And these are plastic cups. This can work as long as they're plastic. We put in water when we're using the dyes. And you see all these equipment come into play when I'm demonstrating through the technique. Uh, you must have, of course, plastic plates. They must be plastic so that the dyes can't go through. The, they can't be paper plates. Paper plates is out. It has to be plastic so that it's waterproof. Uh, white is a better plate, I think, because you can see the colors of the dyes when you're mixing them. So I prefer white. And we have uh, wax. Wax comes in these blocks. 
and it has to be paraffin wax. You could use soya wax, that could work, but most people are very, we're very common with paraffin wax, which is candle wax. So we have candles. If you can't get uh, paraffin wax, use candles. Candles will do the same thing. It comes in blocks, or well, whoever who's selling them can, bring, can break them into little units. And this wax is what we put into our rice cooker here. We have this rice cooker here. Um, uh, any rice cooker can actually do. There are several, um, Black and Dacre, Honeywell, but I prefer to use to melt the wax in the rice cooker because of the safety issue. And um, if you take a close look at this box, you'll find that I've cut out holes where I can switch it on, and I've, put, I've also cut a hole here where I plug it into the socket. Now, why I do this to put it in this box is for safety. It means that you can't kick it, it can't roll over, especially when you're teaching youth, or especially in grade six, grade six, kids play around a lot. And when they play around a lot, around a lot, they can push the wax and it can you know, spill on them because it's hot. So when you put it in the box, it is safe. Now I can put a whole uh, brick of uh, wax in here. They come, usually it's about this big. I probably, in fact, I broke this one, it was about that big. So I broke this one in two halves and break it into this before I put it into the rice cooker. And um, let me see if there's anything else I've forgotten. Ah, our dear pencil is right here because you've got to do the sketching on a piece of paper. But I'm gonna show you how all these equipment fall into place. Now I'll be listing all these equipment towards the end of the video so that you know exactly what materials you need to have. And that should um, get us now ready to do the first um, demonstration of uh, sketching.